morning, Epic family. Let's stand to our feet, and we are going to give thanks and rejoice together today. Here we go. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, family, let's give thanks today. Lift your voice. We sing. Give thanks to the Lord. Love endures forever. Give praise, give praise to the Lord. Beside Him, there's no other. Give thanks, we sing. Give thanks to the Lord. His love endures forever. Give praise, give praise to the Lord. No other. Hey! Alright, come on, here we go. This is the day. This is the day the Lord has made. Oh, oh, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. Oh, oh, I will rejoice and be glad in it. He brought us from morning to dancing, from glory.
He is worthy of our praise and he's worthy of our trust today. So good. Let's sing this together. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. He's been my fourth man in the fire, time after time. Come on. Oh, born of his spirit, yes we are, and washed in his blood. Is more than enough. Come on, let's respond to that. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. No, He will never fail. Oh, I trust in God, my Savior.
he will never fail. Oh, I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never Sounds like there's some people in the room today that have sought the Lord and found that he's faithful. Amen. Man. Listen, Jesus, he, he taught us. Um, I love the Sermon on the Mount. You should read it. It's really good. Chapter 7, he, he just, he lays out the fact that the Father can be trusted. The creator, the one who, who made you. He's your heavenly father, and he can be trusted with everything. And Jesus points out that a major sign of trusting him is, is asking, seeking, and knocking, that we can come to God and ask him. And that's a sign of our trust in the father, is that we can do that. But perhaps in the room today, you're, you're, you're standing here with us. You're seeing people kind of go for it. And you're seeing this experience happen in other people. But maybe you're longing for that. And I just want to invite you in a little bit. And maybe today you want confidence in God, but you just feel like you lack that. And I just want to invite you to do what Jesus said, just to ask him. Ask him. Seek him even in this moment. I mean, there's some people that could testify that they sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. And that's a real thing. Because when we seek him and we seek him with all of our heart, we find him. And so maybe the pathway to trust today for you is to seek and to ask and to knock. And um, I just want to invite you to do that, just to trust enough faith enough to start asking because I think God is working in this room he's working in this church he's working in our lives he's not done he's working he's active even now he has responded and he will respond and for some of you just need to know that you will receive you will find and even maybe now in the next few moments today in the service, a door is going to be open. And then you just step through. God's going to do it. He's going to do it. He's promised. So it's safe today to bring wherever you're at, wherever your faith is at. Just bring it to the Father. Bring it to the Father. Jesus ends that, that sermon just saying, hey, it's like a wise man who builds his house on a rock, the one who actually hears the word of the Lord and then does something with it, puts it into practice. Let's put it into practice today. Let's activate some faith in this room. Let's activate it. There's no need to stay stale and stagnant. We can move today together. So let's just do this. Just lift our hands, even just in an act of seeking. Pastor Ben's already mentioned this today, but Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God. And we just even pray right now, Lord, in this moment that your kingdom would come, that your will would be done in this place, just like it is in heaven. We invite you to come and have your way, to move in our hearts, to move in our souls and our minds even now. Lead us into more life, to more power, to more love, more freedom, more freedom, God. We trust you. Christ, you are our rock. And you will never fail us. 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 We trust you.
can know that today. Rain came when blue, but my house was built on. Let faith arise as we sing that rain came. Rain came when blue, but my house was built on. And I'm safe, I'm safe with you, and I'm gonna make it. Come on, sing that out. Rain came. Thank you for that promise, Father. Thank you that today we can know that you remain faithful even when we're faithless. But you're not going to leave us there. You show yourself mighty and powerful in our lives. And in this place, there's a lot of people seeking you. And your presence is here. You do show up where you are welcomed and wanted. And we want you. We love your presence. We can't get enough of it. It's what we're here for. Lord, you know how to meet every need better than, than any of us. And, and you know every person. You are meeting their needs. So just continue to respond to the cries of your people. We long for you. We long for revival. We long for restoration of souls and hearts and minds. Lord, you are putting us back together. You're making us whole. We thank you for that. Unite us even today as we listen to your word, as Ben brings a message, Lord, just move powerfully in what he's saying in his life. Lord, even minister to him as he ministers to us. Lord, speak through your servant. We love you, Father. We invite you to have your way in this place, in your name and for your name. Amen. Amen. Well, man, it's, it's, it's so good to be together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love knowing some of your stories and just seeing you worship. It's so real because it's like, man, I know you have sought the Lord in the secret place and it's showing up in the public place. That's cool. It works. All right. Hey, before we continue, would you turn and say hello to somebody near you? Welcome them and then we'll continue with our service.
Good morning again, and welcome to Epic Church. I'm going to ask you guys, as you're taking a seat, if you would move towards the center of your row. That leaves the seats on the edge open, so as our friends are still coming in, it just makes it really easy for them to go ahead and grab a seat. I'm Lindsay, by the way, if we haven't had a chance to meet, and we are so glad that all of you are here today. And especially if you're new here, we want to welcome you into this community. We really do believe that this is a place that you can call home. And we want to help you find your place in this church community. Great place to start is the Connect card. There's one in the seat back in front of you. So if you'd go ahead and grab that card and start to fill it out, we want to make sure that you don't miss out on anything that's happening here. So fill that out. And as you do, be sure to check the box that says new to Epic. We want to send a blue bottle coffee gift card straight to your inbox this week. It's just one small way that we can say thank you so much for taking the time to be here. And no worries, you'll have a chance to turn that card in towards the end of our time together. As you are filling that out, I want to invite you to our Next Steps Lunch. If you are new, you're looking to get more involved, Next Steps Lunch is for you. The next one is happening September 8th. It's directly following our noon gathering. And it's a chance where you come, our pastors are there. We get to eat lunch together, Next Steps Lunch. And it's also where you can hear more about the vision of our church, the values that we hold. And again, how you can find your part in this church family. And my, my favorite thing about it is you get the chance to meet other people who are just like you, who are also new here and looking to get more involved. So come to Next Steps Lunch. We would love to have you. And then I don't know about you, but it kind of feels like summer is coming to a close and I, I, I have mixed feelings about it. Yeah. Olympics are almost over. School's back in session. And so we've had an incredible summer here, so many summer sessions to be a part of it. And we wanted, listen, there's one last chance before we close this summer out for you to come and be a part of what God's doing this summer. This Wednesday, right here in this room, 7 p.m., we've got a night of prayer and worship. Worship and wait. It's our last summer session, so don't miss it. We've got room for everyone right here, 7 o'clock in this room. You don't have to sign up. You can just show up. We would love to see you there. And then everyone's marking their calendars for September 1st. Not only is it Labor Day weekend, but for the first time ever, it is Student Sunday right here at Epic, and we are so thrilled about that. And what that means is, yeah, you guys can give it up. We've got some students in the room. They need to feel your excitement about that. Our middle and high school students are going to be leading the way for the first time ever our entire gathering, 9, 10, 30, and noon, they're going to be using their gifts, their passions, their talents to lead from this platform. And we don't want you to miss out on getting to experience their leadership. And so make sure if you're in town, you don't miss that Student Sunday, September 1st. And then as for today, we are continuing our series, The Good Shepherd. Pastor Ben's going to come and teach in just a moment. And before he does, we're going to pray. And I want to invite you to pray with me. We believe that God speaks and that he is speaking this morning. And he has something so specific that he wants to say to you. And so this is a chance where we can open ourselves up to what God might have for us today. So would you join me in that? God, we are so grateful that you are here and that you are with us. We're so grateful that you are a God who still speaks. We need you, God. So we say, Holy Spirit, would you come? Would you speak to us now? We need your words of life and of hope and of faith and of courage and of healing. And so we are here and we are listening and we trust you. So would you come and would you speak now? In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
from the start, I want you to know that I believe that God is speaking and that he's going to speak today. I want you to know that I have put the time and prayer and preparation into this sermon like I do with every sermon, and I'm not sure what God has that he's going to say to us, even through me, over the next 30 minutes. I just feel it in a profound way, uh, in a unique and rare way than even most times I'm up here. So I'm cognizant. I just want you to know that I believe whatever your story is, that God can speak to you. Whatever addictions you're coming out of, I believe that God can speak to you. To the young man who's at, the chur- at church for the second time in his adult life, I believe that God will speak to you. For my own son who's at church for the last time before he goes to university, I believe God will speak to you. For those of us who have friends that are losing their parents, maybe today, I believe God will speak to us. And I especially believe to all of us who have had our consciences and our lives hijacked by the voice of the stranger, I especially believe that God is going to speak to us. The question really is, when he speaks, will we hear him? Or have we convinced ourselves that we already know what he will say? We know that he's angry. We know he's disappointed. We know we haven't done enough. We know we haven't measured up. Or maybe if he speaks, he'll speak in a tone that's apathetic or monotone or indifferent because if he does exist, surely he doesn't care about us. And I believe that God wants to speak today. And what I really believe God wants to speak to us is that he wants to speak to us. (laughs) Like, Ben, that's redundant. Let me say it again. I believe that what God wants to speak to us is that he wants to speak to us. And I believe a word from God is better than anything else we could get today. Anybody? So let's, let's see what he has for us. Let me just... Let me just give us um, a little bit of space to pray, and then, and then I'll get into um, what I think at least will be the sermon that I wrote. We'll see. Just in the space of this silence, with as little or as much faith as you can muster up, just ask for God to do this. God, would you speak to me? God, we're asking for you to speak. God, we pray that you would, in this moment, even drown out the loudest voices in our lives that are not your voice. God, in this moment, we're asking, you know the distracted world we live in, but would you arrest our attention? God, would you free us from the lie that we're still hanging on to in this moment? A word from you is better than any amount of money we could get today. It's better than a first date we could get today. It's better than the prediction of the stock market or who's going to be the next president. God, we are asking for you to speak. In Jesus' name, amen. Early July, I flew down to Burbank to record the audio version for Bring It Out, my book that releases two weeks from Tuesday. And I don't know, if you happen to get a publishing contract, what would be the one kind of thing you cared about most in the negotiation? But for me, it literally was the single most important thing in the negotiation. I wanted to read my own audio book. Otherwise, I could just envision some monotone person (laughs) sharing this life-giving content. And yeah, they told me, Ben, um, for first-time authors like you, that doesn't happen. I was like, all right. Several months went by. I, did, I quit praying about it. I was just resigning myself that that wasn't going to happen. And then I received an email from Christian Audio asking me if I would read the audio version. And to be honest, I would have paid them to let me read it. But they emailed me. It wasn't a big sum of money, don't worry. But they said, hey, we'll pay you. And by pay you, we'll, mean we'll give you enough just to cover a couple of hotel nights in Burbank. And, uh, and they did. And so on uh, July 1, 2, and 3, Sean and I were down in Burbank. They had set aside three days from 9.30 to 4, those three days for me to go in and read the audiobook, And it's like no big deal, right? I talk for a living. I mean, this is going to be easy. 
I read the first sentence, he's like, you're too fast. I read the sentence over, he's like, you're too slow. I read it again, he said, you sound too sing-songy. I don't even know what that means. I said, you should meet our friend Seth. You thought about sing-songy. He's got, he's got you covered. But when we went in there, I met the audio engineer. He led me to Studio 3. Don't think it's, it's not as exciting as you think it is. It's a small room. It actually looked just like this. Here's my setup on that day. Studio 3, that is me. There are no windows in there. There is a chair. There is a professional microphone. There are headphones for me to be able to hear him when he tells me, I need you to read that again. I need you to read that again. I got it, man. I'm reading it again. And, uh, and there's an iPad with the manuscript, my manuscript preloaded onto it. That's it. Uh, he put his phone on silent. I put my phone on silent. And we just went for it. It was fun. It was fascinating. It was exhausting. There would be a moment where he would say to me, I need you to read that sentence again because I heard a little bit of plain noise above the studio. I don't know if he was playing me just so I could say more words, but um, it was an incredible setup and we got it done. It's actually available. If you pre-order the book, you can get the audio for free. So it, it's there, like it worked. I saw it this week pop up on Amazon. It's four hours, 34 minutes. Um, so we made it happen. But can you imagine if he had taken me to the busiest, most crowded, loudest place in all of LA, and we tried to record the audio for the book there? Hey, can you imagine that? I mean, what would have happened if we were in the middle of tons of people, I couldn't hear him, he couldn't hear me, and whoever was going to get the audio version of the book, it would be so choppy that they would not be able to hear what I so wanted to communicate through this book. You see, this audio engineer, he knew a few things. He had done over 300 audio books, and so he knew how to make the environment conducive enough so that we could crystal clearly communicate the content that I thought was so important. With that in mind, let's suppose that there is a God and that he's saying something to us consistently. Here's the big question before we get into the teaching. Is your life conducive to hear what God might be saying to you? If he is speaking, if he's communicating, if there's something he wants to get from his heart to your heart, is your life actually conducive enough? Is it a suitable environment so that you could even hear what this God is saying? We're in John chapter 10 today, continuing on this Good Shepherd series. If you have a Bible, you can go to John chapter 10. We're going to be in verses 1 through 6. And here's the question, uh, second question I genuinely want to ask you. If it is true that God is speaking to you, wouldn't you want to set your life up so that you could hear his voice? I'm asking again. I really want you to think about it. If he's saying something to you specifically, wouldn't you want to set your life up so that you could hear his voice? Well, let me warn you, so many of us, if not most of us, our lives are not currently set up so that we could hear whatever he might be saying. But I believe there's hope today. Would you stand to your feet? I want to read John chapter 10, verses 1 through 6. Uh, not in our passage today, at least I won't cover it, but in this chapter, this is where you get the title of our series. This is where Jesus says in verse 11, I am the good shepherd. And so he's referring to himself, but he begins this in verse 1 where he says, Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. Let me just pause. If his sheep follow him because they know his voice, is it possible to follow Jesus without knowing what he sounds like? Yeah. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. We don't want to be like Pharisees in this moment. We want to understand, don't we? Yes. Have a seat. Let's put our best focused attention in for the next 30 minutes and understand what it's like to hear from God. No surprise, and Will shared this as he kicked off the series last week, but we're not all that familiar with the shepherd sheep metaphor in downtown San Francisco, are we? And it was fascinating last week, Will was like, I know, how many of you have vocations as a shepherd? And it was at 1030, you know how there's one guy in every crowd? 
dude raises his hand, and we're like, come on, man. Whatever. Like, I, like most of us don't have a blade of grass. How are you shepherding here in San Francisco? And the guy, a tool brings the guy to me in the lobby after 1030. I say, hey, Ben. Um, and the guy introduced himself. He was visiting from Montana. <laughs> he has two primary vocations. He's a pilot and a shepherd. So Will asked the guy, hey, is there anything I got wrong about what I said about shepherd and sheep? He said, not necessarily. Just know if my wife was here, she literally would have been offended that you said sheep are dumb. Like, she's too close. (laughs) She's, she's, she must be too close. So I don't bring you firsthand experience of the shepherd understanding, but I have done some study and I'll tell you uh, what Jesus says in this passage, I've discovered something that helped me really understand what he's getting after in these first six verses. In a sheep pen, there would be tons of sheep, but they didn't belong to one shepherd. They belonged to multiple shepherds. But overseeing that one sheep pen was a gatekeeper. And here was the aha moment for me. I think it might be for you too. The gatekeeper knew which one of the shepherds had legitimate business being in the sheep pen. You following me? What is Jesus saying? He's saying, if you belong to me, I am the good shepherd, and I alone have legitimate business overseeing your life. He's saying that the thieves and robbers who know they will never be granted access by the gatekeeper, if they're going to take sheep, they're going to have to climb over the wall, maybe hoist the sheep to their buddy on the other side of the wall. But the gatekeeper knows who has legitimate business being in the sheep pen and who does not. And right there is a whole word for some of us. So I'm just going to pause in my own spirit and ask it. I mean, who are you giving access to your life that doesn't and hasn't earned access to your life? Who's leading you that has no business shepherding your life? What personalities, what political person, what political party, what ideology, what company manifesto, what boss, what voice in your own head is not the true voice of your good shepherd and none of these voices have any legitimate business being in your life and yet they are owning you. Anxiety is at a level it's never been at. The same with depression. It's not because we haven't made advances. I'm just convinced. And if you look at the words of Jesus, we'll begin to understand that that, that there, there, there are people that we have given access to our minds, what we think about truth, to our hearts, what we feel about God, what we feel about the world, what we feel about our enemies. And, and I just wonder today, who have you granted access to who has no business having access to you. I would be taking notes today. I think there's a lot to process. Jesus lets us know that there's a relationship that's not private, but it is personal between the shepherd and the sheep between him as the good shepherd and us as his sheep. And here's how I'll say it on the screen. Jesus intends for our relationship or your relationship with him to be one of familiarity and intimacy. Here's the question. Is this your intention for the relationship? Some of you are afraid God only wants to meet with you at a distance and others of you are afraid for God to come close and not stay at a distance. He wants a relationship that is familiar and growing in intimacy, vulnerability, which means more of your life open to more of his life. More of you open to more of him. That is what he's after. That's what he wants. And he says that his sheep know his voice. What do you personally think God's voice sounds like? If we were to take a poll and you were to answer maybe anonymously so that you would be more honest with your response to the question, I think the kind of leading category that we would respond with would be something like this. I think his voice is one of anger, disappointment, or condemnation. I think he's a judge ultimately. I believe he's constantly telling me I should have done this or I shouldn't have done this. I'm not enough. I'll never be enough. Second category of people, though, I think would say, Hey, it's not that I think he's angry. I just think that he's apathetic or indifferent or distant. 
I think he's there, but I don't think he cares. So no, he's not like getting all up in my business, but he doesn't, he would never get all up in my business because he's not, he's not close. He's got so many sheep to keep up with. How in the world could he possibly care for me? And so what would we need to know to be convinced that his voice is something different than those voices? You see, I'm convinced that whatever you think God's voice sounds like to you directs the entirety of your life. Whatever you think he is saying or isn't saying directs what you think about him, but it also directs what you think about yourself and what we think about each other in this room. But Jesus says that the shepherd knows the sheep, and the shepherd uses his voice to speak to the sheep, and the shepherd gives personal attention to the sheep, and we know this because the shepherd gives each one of these sheep a name. So think about this wild concept. Jesus has used his voice to give you your identity. Jesus has taken his voice to confer an identity on you. And here's the identity. Here's some of the words that we just see straight from him. He wants today to call you the beloved, chosen, friend, free, saved, healed, forgiven, daughter, son. So that's what he wants to confer on you. That's what he has conferred on you if you belong to him. But here's the question. Who are you letting name you and tell you who you are? Who are you letting name? I mean, again, I would be taking notes. Like like we know the church answer, but most of us aren't living the church answer. So you tell me, who are you letting name you and tell you who you are? Some of you are letting a boss who may or may not give you a promotion tell you who you are. Some of you, even though you broke up with them or they broke up with you eight years ago, you're letting an ex still tell you who you are. Some of you have the voice of a father or a mother figure who didn't want what was best for you, and so it was harsh, it was judgmental, it was condemning to you. They are still you're living up here rent-free, and they are trying to tell you who you are. You and I need to identify who's trying to name us. It could be an ideology and culture. It could be the, the presence or absence of success or accomplishment or wealth or anything else. Who are you letting name you and tell you who you are? You are probably familiar with this, but whenever a new stadium opens, there's a company that tends to get naming rights to that stadium, right? This is why you're like, how did they call that that? Like, how is that, you know, like six names? So um, just let's go with history in our neighborhood. Uh, The baseball stadium right down the street has had a few different names, and I'm going to see if you can tell me when the stadium opened, what was the name of that stadium? Pac Pac Bell. Excellent. What did it move on to next? And now it is Oracle. Oracle. Great. If I had a cookie, I don't. And the reason it's changed is not because they're like, oh, we've got a new idea. No, no, it's just because a company offered X amount of millions and millions and millions, um, and they got to name it for X amount of time. And so often what we forget is that Jesus has paid the highest price to have naming rights over our lives, and we're letting everything and everything else, everyone else name us. I mean, I've let people do it. Some of you, because you don't have more followers on social media, you're letting them name you? Because your boss wants to act like they have all control over you, you're letting them name you? Because you vote different than someone else, they get to name you? It's time to take back our identity. It's time to quit letting people who do not have legitimate business naming us stop naming us. If God says you're free, guess what you are? Then stop acting enslaved. If he says you're healed, you're you're, you're not still damaged goods. You are healed. If he says you're saved, who cares what they call you? Will you stop giving more authority to them than him? He doesn't just tell us who we are. He leads us. So he tells us who we are, and then I love this. He shows us where to go. Now, if you're going to play along, every hand's going to go up, but how many of you are interested in your future? I am interested in your future, too. That's why I'm giving it all I got today. I'm interested in my future. I love the future. It's part of my job here at Epic. I help people create life plans for their future. I love it. And yet, when we get so obsessed with, a year, 
five years, 10 years, 20 years from now, we miss the voice of our shepherd this day. I get that. Can I just be honest about what I want and what you want so often as humans? Here's what we want the voice of our good shepherd to do. Just tell me the playbook for the rest of my life and I'll take it from here. Right? We want, like when we're like, you, you know, it, it's like, it, it's amazing when you want to find your future spouse or your next job, you're like, just tell me your will, God. Tell me your will. Tell me your will. And God's like, um, I've been trying to give you my will for the last four years, but I guess you weren't desperate enough. Yes, he doesn't want to just hand us destinations or who we're supposed to marry or where we're supposed to live or what job to take. He wants us to stay in step so that we can hear. He, he wants us to, so here's the thing. Rather than freaking out about if I'll be in the right place 20 years from now, how about I stay close to him today? How about you wake up and stay close to him tomorrow? Guess where you'll be five years from now? Some of you are thinking about your job. No, you'll be right behind your good shepherd. Now, if you have a better destination in mind, he will let you go off on the, your own path. But he wants me to stay close. He wants you to stay close to him. That's, that's what he's trying to do. So the question is, what voice are you following most closely? Here's one way to know, and this is convicting to me too, so I'll fill it with you. When you know what a presidential candidate said verbatim and you don't know what God has said, when you know the stats of your favorite athlete and who won X amount of Olympic medals and you don't know what Jesus has promised to you, same. I, I can quote lots of things. But what voice is leading me? What voice am I following most closely? Mark Batterson said in his book, Whisper, which is all about how God speaks to us, he says, you will eventually be shaped in the image of the loudest voice in your life, the voice you listen to most. You will eventually, like, it, you won't be able to, and some I love it when people are like, yeah, I heard that for hours and hours and hours, or I watched that for hours and hours and hours, and it had no effect on me. Like, you're superhuman, I guess. No, what we take in has an effect on us. So you've got to keep asking yourself the question, what am I taking in? What are the loudest inputs? What are the most frequent inputs? What are the longest inputs in my life on a daily basis? Jesus said that his sheep will never follow a stranger's voice. And listen to the reason why. This is very important. He says they will not follow a stranger's voice because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. You know what my fear is for us? We're way more familiar with a stranger's voice than with his voice. So, so, so let's flip it around. If you're not familiar with his voice, then when he speaks to you, guess what? You won't be able to discern and decipher his voice. I always get up early on Sunday mornings. I actually set my alarm for even 30 minutes earlier today because I wanted to hear from him. I, I wanted him to speak to me. I wanted to remind myself that, Ben, you're not performing later on for all these people. You're trying to hear from God so that you can speak on his behalf to people. I want to, I want to hear him. I want to do that tomorrow, too. This is not a Sunday thing. If, he, if he's only speaking on Sundays, I'll just show up on Sundays. Anybody? But if he's Monday through Friday, through Saturday, through Sunday, 24-7, 168 hours, then I want to keep my life. It doesn't mean I'm not doing anything else. I want to keep my life open to what his voice is saying to me, and I want you to be able to do the same. I think another question to ask is this. What voices in your life should you start running away from? Stranger voices, I'm with you. Like specifically for you, there are voices that you should start running. Now, this is, I, I want to camp out here for a while because this is like just, Jesus compares the voice of the good shepherd to the voice of a stranger. Question you should ask, don't answer out loud just yet. Let me just tease it up for him. I know you know all the answers. This hypothetical or sort of rhetorical question, but who do you think the stranger is? Let me give you some ideas. The Pharisee, I think, is a stranger. Why? Because they were speaking on behalf of God, but they were leading people away from God. Any voice that leads you away from the voice of your shepherd is the voice of a stranger. 
The devil surely would have a stranger's voice, right? Shows up in the garden, right, in Genesis 3. Any voice that starts with, did God really say, is a stranger's voice. But I love how one commentator put it, and I think this fits with what Jesus is getting across. The stranger is anyone other than the good shepherd. The stranger is anyone other than the good shepherd. And if you're not aware, and I think you probably are, but we get deceived into all kinds of beliefs, all kinds of um, ideologies, all kinds of uh, lifestyles. Um, there are strangers' voices everywhere around you today. You do know this, right? Guys, sometimes we are a stranger voice to someone else. When I speak to my wife or my kids in a way that doesn't represent the good shepherd, I'm the stranger's voice. We all do it. So this is not about shame, condemnation. You with me? But she doesn't need to take that in when I'm doing it. No matter who you're voting for, I'm hearing strangers' voices everywhere on all the sides, politically speaking. Everywhere. Some of you have just started dating someone and it is fun, and you love that they have the same favorite ice cream flavor that you do. <laughs> but if you're not careful, you will be deceived in thinking it's the best thing, but they will be creating an ideology and moving you off the path God has for you if they don't want to follow the voice of the good shepherd. There are stranger voices all over YouTube. We're on YouTube, so we believe, like, there's great voices all over YouTube, all over social media. There are lots of stranger voices. And then we take the stuff to heart. I mean, can we just be honest? There are stranger voices living in here. How many things do you and I take in and say to ourselves that God would never say anything like that? How much self-hatred do we have? God would never put that in our mouth. Never. It's stranger voice. And we've got, to, we've got to be able to know, well, how can I avoid being led astray by a stranger? You guys, if you go default, stranger is going to rule you. If you go with the flow, so I want to end the message by just getting real practical and asking this question. How can we know and follow the voice of the good shepherd? I hope you want to know the answer to that. What I'm about to give us is not an exhaustive list, but I do think these four things are critical if you want to make sure that you are getting familiar with the good shepherd's voice in an ongoing manner. Here's the first one. Familiarize yourself with his voice by immersing yourself in Scripture each day. I'm always amazed when people tell me, I'm just praying for God to speak. He's not saying anything yet. And then I ask them about their Scripture practices, and they don't have one. No condemnation here, but you guys, he's spoken. He's spoken, and he's going to keep speaking. He doesn't just speak. We don't believe that here at Epic, just so you know. We believe that he speaks in a fresh way right now. But this gives us like, this gives us texture to knowing what he sounds like. What, what he declares about himself, what he declares about you, what he declares about our world, what he declares about our enemy, what he declares about the poor, what he declares about what we should do with our time, our money, our attention, our lives, our service, our gifts. We want to hear him, yes. Get familiar here and then you will be able to recognize because otherwise we can have an emotional moment and we think we've heard from God, anybody. It's like, no, you were just at a concert and they played that chord, Justin, that when you play that chord, everybody hears from God, but that might not be God. <laughs> right? Am I, am I true? So I want to go, oh, but no, Ben, I know, oh, I, I can have promptings, and then I've got to check it. Are you, does that make sense? A prompting is super important. God speaks to me through promptings all the time. But if I know Scripture, then I will recognize, what. no, Ben, that can't be what God's saying because he actually said the exact opposite. So I'm going to know that. Uh, I love what Dallas Willard said. He said, um, more of God's speaking has come, to me has come in conjunction with study and te teaching of the Bible than with anything else. Now, it doesn't mean you have to teach the Bible. He's just saying this. I've heard God speak a lot. This came from his book, Hearing God. And he, he gives you, it's really cool. It's a great, great work of his. I love it. But he's just saying the, the way I got familiar and, and uh, the practice of hearing God was by immersing myself more in Scripture. Here's the second thing. The more your mind is governed by the Holy Spirit, the more you'll be able to hear Him when He speaks to you. The more your mind, so this is Romans 8. The, 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 the mind governed by the Spirit is one of life and peace. Um, Rachel and I taught a series earlier this year called It's All in Your Head. 
And God did a lot of work through that series. It was about the mind. And one of the messages I gave, it just, I just called it, and you can go find all this. It was four weeks. Yeah, four weeks. The mind has a leader. And um, scripture just says that your mind is being governed by a leader. Jesus says in here, he wants to lead you out, but it's possible you're allowing a stranger's voice to lead you out. So the flesh will never lead you where the good shepherd wants to lead you. So the more you're governed by the Holy Spirit, the more you're walking in step with the Holy Spirit, the more you'll be able to recognize what he's saying to you when he speaks to you. Here's a third thing you can do. Compare the convincing voices in your life to the voice of your good shepherd. Just because someone's loud doesn't mean it's true. Just because of 90% of people in San Francisco say it doesn't mean it's true. Come on. Just because your pastor says it doesn't mean it's true. You're with me. Compare the convincing voices in your life to the voice of your good shepherd. And then fourth, this is a great diagnostic. Pay attention to what you're saying and how you're speaking to other people. I heard this at a conference years ago. I did not have to go look it back up because I've never forgotten it. Here's what the speaker said. The voice you listen to most will become the voice you speak with most. So one great diagnostic is to just go, hey, how am I speaking to other people? How am I speaking? Right? If I think God's angry with me, guess what's coming out for me to you? If I think God's not taking care of me and I'm anxious, guess how I'm going to treat you? If I think the only thing God thinks about is that he's disappointed in me, guess what I've got coming for you? And so pay attention. Like, what voice am I hearing the most? Because it should affect how I speak. And church, one of the things we've been called to do is represent the voice of the good shepherd to each other. And we've got a huge opportunity to do that this fall. You'll hear more about it before the service is over. But we are launching a brand new season of groups, and we're launching a brand new season of Alpha. Alpha helps people who are coming back to faith, new to faith, seeking faith. It helps them understand what God might be saying to them. And we need a boatload of leaders to step in and help our current leadership team because our church is reaching a lot of people right now who are new to faith. And when it comes to group leaders, um, you guys, just facts here. Uh, we need people who will help others discern the voice of God. And we will do all the training for you. We will help you out. But the reality is our church is growing at a clip we've never grown at, which means we're not going to be able to offer community and smaller groups to everyone who needs to be in a small group this fall. Does that make sense? Leaders are ready to step up. I know they're just, they're silent about it, but they're going to find you, Lindsay, after, after, after the service. I want, to, I want to ask you to just take a posture of prayer. I'm going to ask Seth and the team to come up and just begin playing, and we're going to, we're going to try something and see if we can just take God at his word. So here's how this is going to go. I told you to begin this message. I believe God wants to speak to you today, and I believe he's going to speak to you today. We've learned some principles and practices about how to discern and decipher and hear the voice of our Good Shepherd. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to ask God's Spirit to bring to my mind things that Jesus has said that he wants to say fresh to you today. And when I say something from the lips of Jesus that you know you need to hear today, I'm going to ask you to stand. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and ask those of you who are ready to pray and minister as leaders, if you would go ahead and, yeah, everybody's going to stay seated. Um, but, but if you're going to pray and minister as one of our leaders, and then when I, when I say some things that Jesus has said, if it's you, if this is the words you need to receive, I'm going to ask you to stand. So we just want to hear from him. What does he want to say? Jesus, what do you want to say to people in this room? I think one thing that Jesus has said and wants to say in a fresh way today is you don't have to worry about your future. In Matthew 6, you, you do not need to worry about your life. If that's a word for you, would you just stand? What you're thinking about, what you're afraid of, where you're headed, the transition, the new thing. Jesus is saying to you, and our team's ready to pray with you. At any point, you can move out on that. The altar's open. But Jesus is just saying to you, you don't have to worry about your life. In fact, he's saying to you, um, you're wasting your time by, yeah, come on. You're wasting your time by worrying about your life. 
He said, who could add one hour to their life by worry? You don't need to worry about your life. Some of you have desires in your heart, but you've not expressed them to him. Here's what he's saying to you. Ask, seek, and knock. Everyone who asks, he'll answer. Those who seek will find. Those who knock, the door will be open. If today you've just, you've wanted something, but you haven't even expressed it, so this word is for you, would you stand? You know that he's, he's speaking to you. Ask, seek, knock. If there's something you want to ask him for, would you stand? I believe there are some people in this room who have been led astray by lies. And those lies about what would bring you happiness, about the best use of your time, lies about God, lies about yourself, lies about others. I believe they have enslaved you. And today Jesus wants to say that if the Son has set you free, you can be free indeed. If there's anyone who wants to receive that word to be free from what you've been enslaved to, you can stand. Yeah. If there's anyone who's physically or spiritually or mentally or emotionally exhausted in this season, Jesus would say to you in this moment, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest for your souls. If you're deeply in need of rest, you can stand. And the last thing that I sense is some of you have been so far from God. And the word to you from the lips of Jesus is this. The Father and I want to make our home in you as you make your home in us. Come home. I don't know who that's for, but I believe it is for some. Would you stand if that's you? So Jesus, our good shepherd, we, we hear you. We want to respond. We want to trust the word that you've spoken to us. Would you help us to run away from the stranger's voice? Would you help us receive our identity from you and follow you wherever it is that you want to lead us? We came in today, even if we didn't know it, desperate for a word from you, and I pray that we would receive it before we leave. Thank you for what you're speaking. Thank you for what you're clarifying. Thank you that you want familiarity and intimacy with us. Thank you that you alone have legitimate business leading our lives. Train us to hear your voice. We recognize you. What we're hearing this moment, God, we want to hear it on a Tuesday afternoon. We want to hear it in the mundane days. We want to hear it in the hardship. We want to hear it in the joyful moments. Tune our hearts to hear you. God, would you keep speaking? And as you do, we will respond. I want to ask everyone who's not standing to go ahead and stand. Jesus wants to keep speaking. He wants to do it by his spirit. He wants to do it from his word. And even if you aren't sure what he might say, we would love to pray over you today at the front. But let's respond. A word from Jesus, your good shepherd, can do what nothing else can do. He wants to bring it. Let's respond. Let's sing. Let's worship.
reminded that part of the goodness of God is being able to gather like this with all of you together on a Sunday morning. For me, when I step into this space, it's a tangible reminder. I hear God speaking to me. Lindsay, you are not alone. Not only am I with you, but I've given you my people as well. And so I'm so grateful for the community that we get to exist in. And this summer, we've had an incredible time building into this community through our summer sessions. We've been having fun across life stages. We've been gathering around specific topics, growing in our faith. And I want to thank you for your generosity that makes that possible. Every time that we gather, every meal and snacks that we provide, your generosity is what makes us able to do that. And so for all of you who consistently and faithfully give towards the mission of God here, we wanna say thank you so much. You're making a difference building into this community. And if you wanna give, but you haven't yet, now's a great time to join us. You can know that you can use your resources to make a difference in other people's lives in reminding them that they are not alone. So you can always follow the prompts on the screen to do that or use the giving envelope. And it's not only through our generosity of our resources, but also through our time and our talents, our leadership, as Pastor Ben mentioned. We are looking to add more and more groups this fall. They kick off in just a few weeks because we wanna make space for all of you and all of your friends and everyone at nine and everyone at noon to be able to step into a group. And to do that, we need more leaders. So if you want to join us in leading a group or leading an alpha, you can email me. You can find me afterwards. You can also go to our website, epicsf.com slash group leader, and you can let us know that way. But we would love to talk more about that. As we do give, this is also the time where you can turn in that connect card if you filled one out at the beginning of our time together all the way on the right of the row. You guys will grab that bucket that's under that last chair and pass it on down. Again, great place to drop your Connect card or any giving envelopes. And as it makes its way all the way to the other side, someone from our host team will go ahead and they will collect those things from you. As we dismiss today, I wanna to pray blessing over you as you go. As you go today, may God bless you. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. And may he give you peace. As you go, may you go looking and listening for God's voice. Being confident that he is speaking and he has something he wants to say to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You guys are dismissed. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for joining us on the Epic Church live stream. We hope that you found today's message encouraging and helpful in your faith. If you'd like to learn more, we invite you to visit epicsf.com, the Epic SF app, and our social media channels where you can watch past messages and keep up with everything God is doing in and throughout our community here in downtown San Francisco. Wherever you're joining us from, we hope that you have a great rest of your day and that we'll see you again next time.